Hello everybody, this is Water Tips, also as known as Action Man 2010, and welcome to an exciting episode of DC Universe Online. Now today I thought I'd discuss uh, some things uh, about DC Universe Online over the past years that you may or may not have known, uh, things that have changed, things that are still around, uh, keep the game flowing. So let's, let's get ready and uh, reset your memory and refresh it and see if you remember any of these things I'm going to be talking about. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, DC Universe Online, the uh, character creation mode. <clears throat> now, as everybody knows, the creation mode to DC Universe is pretty much the biggest part of the gameplay before you get into the actual missions, leveling up, and all that stuff. Now, with the um, character creation mode, which you may or may not have known, there actually was only three builds you could use from the beginning, back in the get-go, back in 2010 or 11. Now, most people uh, nowadays can use three builds with uh, also three different types of those builds. Like, for instance, back in 2010, <coughs> 2011, excuse me, um, there was only Striker, Brute, and Sprite. Now you can actually use Striker, Medium, Small, and Large, Brute, stri Medium, Small, and Large, and Sprite, Medium, Small, and Large. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different builds you can have with each category having three different sizes for each one. Now, also in creature creation mode, there are probably a few things they took out and actually put back in. Like there was never a shield weapon that they put in a few years later. Um, there was a, there was never there was only three movements: flight, speed. And acrobatics, they had just barely added one of like for the past two or three years. It had skimming, that was never there before. Um, so there's been a few changes with character creation mode from now on. DC Universe Online, that there actually used to be uh, no base items or no any kind of backup or anything in their bases you could use. So players really just uh, kind of went with what they had. They had usual uh, power, their weapon attacks, your, whatever you used to your disposal, but there was no way of making your own base. There was no turf war type of DLC package, anything like that. So people were just, uh, it's like they never even knew about it. They had to use what they had to use and just continue to play the game as it was. Now over time, these updates, of course, the base items were available, they have turf wars, now even they have all kinds of stuff like backup, orbital strikes, and uh, supply drops as well as backup, and even mods you can add to your gear to make it more efficient in battle and to help you with your stats and abilities. Now, um, as, far as, the, as far as the modding and stuff goes, it hasn't quite changed that much. There's been artifacts I've added to the game, which are, which are things which you can get in the game called Ninth Metal, which you collect, which you can put towards your artifacts and move up your rank now, which there wasn't be them before. Uh, that's a very new addition to the game. Um, also, too, besides the fact that, um, going back to talking about creation mode, um, as far as creating your character, there also was only three palettes. You can only pick three colors with your characters and be able to use only three colors in their palette, which seemed to do the duty back then and was okay. But some people were kind of getting a little bit concerned and they were getting a little bit bored with just the three palettes and they weren't able to do certain colors and they, they kind of thought they should add one more color. Especially if they're making iconic figures or iconic characters in the game where they would require more than three colors, it just would make the grade for them. So they, there was a lot of feedback on it and now they actually have four palettes. So that's something else you may not know about DC Universe Online. There was only three palettes, and now there's four. <clears throat> Another thing too is uh, basically uh, the uh, cities. As you know, of course, now in this brand new year, 2018, there are various worlds everywhere you can go. With between various, from Metropolis to Doom Metropolis, the new event that just came out to the Superman. There's Gotham City. There's Central City. There's Demascara, there's Mogo, there's uh, New Genesis. All these different worlds that people can go and basically explore and do missions and collect all kinds of gear and get their character level to stat and get them up to speed. Now, before all that, of course, back in the day, there was actually no central city even. There was only Metropolis and Gotham and maybe a few other places that you could only access after you reach a certain CR, or combat rating, which is basically a rating that you would do for combat that you can raise opposed to gear and whatnot. Um, since then, there have been many advancements in the game, where many open worlds you can do now. 
um, including the Starro World, which there are actually two Central City versions, one which is the Starro World that just came available this past year, which was a summer event that became permanent. And of course, there are other worlds too that are now available. So there's just various worlds over now, as opposed to just the two Gotham and Metropolis and Central City, which was the third one, which kind of set the set the stage for a lot more open worlds to happen. Now, being that um, there were quite a few uh, changes within the worlds, uh, not only that, in fact, during the beginning of the actual game, there were things. There was a phase which you could choose. I believe, uh, if you remember correctly, you could actually uh, choose your phase at the beginning of the game. A little screen popped up once you, before you started your character creation mode. You saw a picture of Catwoman, and you could select your mode, whether you want PvE or PvP. So if you chose PvE in the world you wanted to begin with, you could, you could start creating a world with your character where you could play just against regular you know, villains in the game and not actual player villains. If you pick PvP, you play player versus player, you could actually start the world and get attacked by, by enemy players. Now you can still do this in the game, but it's a very simple switch. They made the game where you push up on the control pad, as you can see, you can toggle to PvP in and out as, as necessary. Uh, given the fact it was actually pretty much the same. But back then, like I said, you could actually pick it from the beginning of the game. There were other phases you could pick too as well, I believe, between the two things. And uh, if you wanted to have a combination of the two or one or the other, you could do that. And uh, they made it very limited, but uh, now they can do more. So that's probably something else you know about DC Universe Online. Now moving on about uh, basically some of the powers like uh, sorcery, for instance, which you may or may not have known about sorcery. It had the various pets like the Fury pet, the Guardian pet, and the Watcher pet. They all did various things. The Guardian was more of a defensive role for your character. The, uh, the Fury pet was more of an attack. And the Watcher was like a kind of a slight mild attack pet that also healed itself and others in a healing role, which you could use in your healing role to use. Now, what you may or may not know about DC Universe Online back in the day, the actual Fury pet that they use wasn't actually a little tiny uh, flying person with a robe on. It looked kind of like a, uh, a, source, a little sorcery character that flew around you. That's kind of what it looks like now. And he does like hand blast attacks with the Fury, with the Red Souls, <clears throat> the Fury spell. Back in the day, and, and, and if you believe it or not, it was actually a flying demon head with horns on its head, and it looked kind of kind of scary. But it just floated around and kind of did it went about and did things just like the uh, actual some miniature sorcery character did. But it just I guess they didn't think that it really made the grade, and people kind of didn't like the idea of having a flying demon head around, whether it was a bad thing or whether it maybe creeped out anybody. I don't know what problem with that, but anyhow. They got they just dropped the demon head and they put it into the actual sorcery guy that flies around. So that that that's what they took out of the game. Now one one thing to make note of is there is an actual mission. I think it's a duo player version of the game where you can actually go in and play it. Uh, I want to say it's the Flash Museum, I believe, a burglary. You can go in there with a with a with a partner or somebody you want to go and group up with. You can actually go on that mission at the very end. You fight Abracadabra, and when you confront Abracadabra, he uses a bunch of like spells and magic against you. And in one of the special attacks he does, you actually do see the demon head for a few seconds. So it's not like it was actually ever gone from the game, totally, but pretty much. So that's the only other time you can really see it in the game. But that's a bit for sorcery. And then talk, speaking, of, speaking of powers, moving on to the ice powers, which you may or may not know about DC Universe Online back in the day, there was actually a way by summoning enough ice powers at once with your powers and your loadout, you could actually turn yourself into an actual ice creature for a limited amount of time. It looked kind of similar to the uh, crystal creature for Earth Pet. You could actually turn into an ice creature and actually run around and fight in that form for a limited amount of time and it was actually kind of neat but for some reason they just dropped the idea and now you're no longer able to do it except for just summon the huge ice creature like always as a supercharged attack elemental attack so it's not like it was really exactly um forgotten but maybe slightly missed but that's something you probably didn't know about DC universe online also too with the actual um nature powers there's been a few changes ever since then most of the powers were revamped or re-slitted down or whatever you want to call it they were nerfed but so they call it the nerf one which makes it more stronger or whether or not that's actually true in my opinion that's something that was being done in the game which means some powers were a lot stronger like the electricity 
at one point was really weak and now it's actually really strong. So whether or not that's actually true, it seems to me have made an impression on certain people with what powers they picked. As far as nature goes, what you may or may not have known as nature was the ability to use plant power as well as healing. It was a healer slash DPS role. Now with the nature power, what was interesting about the nature was you could actually morph yourself into different animals like the wolf, the gorilla, stuff like that. I believe some of them were only temporary. Like there was a gorilla form, whereas back in the day you could suit you could use it as a supercharge and only be turned into a gorilla for like, for a limited amount of time, like 30 seconds to half a minute, and then you transform back into your regular self. And of course, most of the pet powers or transform morphing you actually did, you could actually use a power to transfer some form yourself back into your human form when you were finished. But there was a couple where you could actually go permanently, and the gorilla was not one of them. Of course, now they fixed that problem, so now you can actually turn into the gorilla for almost a permanent amount of time now until you turn back. So that's something you probably didn't know about DC Universe Online. There was also even a version of a, of a flying pterodactyl that you could actually use and transform into when you actually use nature powers. It would look like an actual little tiny green, greenish or whatever color you may have picked for your character that flow around like a pterodactyl. You could use it to attack people, stuff like that. I believe it did heal and do certain properties depending on what you gave it. But it was only, apparently it didn't last very long. It was only a temporary thing in the game and they just actually just basically took it out. So now you can no longer be the pterodactyl. I think some people are kind of disappointed they took it out. So other people just kind of uh, moved on, like myself. <laughs> but you know, it was just one of those things where you could actually turn into a pet and you could fly around. People actually enjoyed it. Whether or not it was actually very uh, beneficial to the game is questionable. I know that there was a few other uh, pets in the game that are a little more stronger now. Um, now with, I think the actual canine version of the actual nature pet you can turn into, you can actually summon a pack of wolves to help battle with your actual single and canine form. So there's a lot of things they added to the game. But that's something probably may or may not know about DC Universe Online. Now moving on, actually too, there was no clamping in the new content. That's right. So basically when you went into the uh, missions in the game, it used to be that you had to go in and you had to just basically get your CR or combat rating up to a certain potential level before you could even enter any kind of world like Central City or within Mascara before you could even play the content. And most people got frustrated. Some people might have quit or whatever they did because they just couldn't, they did, could not or didn't or didn't even want the time to level up their CR so they could actually get into a different world. And uh, so they kind of fixed that problem up until Themyscira where they had Amazon Fury 3, I believe, where they started clamping people into instance. Clamping meaning they put it so that your CR level or, or whatever matched the actual level of the that you are currently playing in the world. So if the actual max level of CR was actually 250, let's say, or whatever, the actual max that you were, being that we, what you were as a lower level, would be would be clamped into the instance so you could be at the actual same CR and actually be able to do the content with like all the other players. This is what they added to the game because they felt that players needed would, would be able to use the content. They feel they'd lose a lot of money off it or whatever. So they basically just put in the clamping so they carry, all players could play the game equally and still level up and get the gear they want. And ever since then it's been going on. So that's one good addition to add to the game so as other players. Now, one really big thing to the game too is that the gadgets battle display. If you remember gadgets powers, the various gadget was a slash DPS slash troll power where it gave power over time to your players. Apparently there was a power called the battle display that was kind of added to the game a little later on. That was almost, that almost never was in the gadgets, but they, like I said, after revamping a few things and changing it, they had a battle display, which was an actual power over time slash healing role, which you were able to actually able to heal yourself every time that you used it, as well as give power over time and everything and whatnot. Apparently they made a change to the game, and uh, for some reason they took out the ability for the battle display to heal you, so you couldn't do that anymore after a while. All, all it did was make your power stronger every time you used it, which actually is still pretty pretty, pretty beneficial to the game, but I think most people probably miss he being able to heal yourself with gadgets, like other powers, like fire you can heal yourself, whereas you never were able to before, or not very much, stuff like that. So anyway, some of you probably never knew about DC Universe Online. The gadgets, battle display, was able to do a lot more than, than it usually did. And uh, they took that out, and now it is still a very good power, but... Um, also, uh, what you may or may not know about DC Universe Online, as far as stuff like the modding and stuff goes, there used to be a, a vendor gear in the Themyscira, I believe it was, where they were called synthetic mods, where you could go into Themyscira and you could actually pick these synthetic mods temporarily as a, as a temporary modding if you couldn't buy the actual plans, regular mods. They would take, oftentimes, a lot of components to make, which you still have to do now, but, um, but apparently, 
for a couple of years they were doing this. Where people they were like a, like a like a like a mod six, I believe, or so. And you'd go into Thema Security, you could get mod or whatever you wanted. It's a temporary thing and put them into your sockets for your gear. And it was able to get you through most really hard or very very challenging type of raids. And most people use the synthetic mods as a temporary fix because they couldn't buy the actual regular ones. And it was actually very beneficial. I have to admit, I did really enjoy the synthetic mods. It's probably the one and only thing that I really hated. They took out of the game, but. Um, they did take them out, yes they did, and uh, apparently that's what uh, they did. And now you can no longer actually use synthetic mods, and you're stuck with just making the regular mods, of course. But like I said, there was ways of getting the mods nowadays, and it's still beneficial to your liking, so people can still get what you need to get to be done. It just takes a little gathering, a little more money. But hey, you can't have everything, I guess. So that's something else you probably know about DC Universe Online. Anyway, moving on to some more things. Um... As you may or may not know, the biggest part of this game of DC Universe Online that was the biggest change I think that affected quite a bit of people, both on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, was the revamp, which basically redid everything as far as how things worked in the game, with uh, mostly with the gear and whatnot. So whereas before it was CR or combat rating, it was based on the gear pushing you up every time you gain a level or get new gear, it would push up your CR every time you got some gear and whatnot. And apparently they changed all the revamps, so basically all it was based on was that skill points you have now. And uh, I actually, in my opinion, I did like the revamp. Now, I SP related as, as much as it was CR back then. Apparently a lot of people in the game were, were disappointed with this. Um, off and on, people liked it, some people didn't like it. And because of that, they did lose people from the game because of it. Now, I myself did like the SP and the revamp change. I don't think it was that big a deal. Um, it, whether you liked it or not is a, is a matter of an opinion. Um, but they did, however, do that, so now everything is actually SP related and no longer CR related. It actually is a lot better in some ways because it makes the game a lot more challenging. It's not as easy as it was when they were CR based. But I know people, a lot of people that do miss it, including the fact that the PlayStation 3 is no longer supporting the game. So now, just a heads up in case you didn't know this already, for the past year or so, the PlayStation 3 system has, has not been supporting DC Universe Online anymore. You have to have a PlayStation 4 system or Xbox One or a PC to be able to play it, of course. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So I actually had one myself. I had to switch over. I didn't want to do it, but I had to because I love this game and continue to play DC Universe Online. For many years, I started from 2010 up until now to 2018. And uh, that was the biggest change of the game. And some people didn't like it, and some people did, but I'm still, but they were still here to play myself. And like I said, um, a lot of things that happened too, like the, um, there were a few things in the game, like the Batman versus Superman swag bag that came out back in 2015, which actually introduced the Batman versus Superman emblem as well as some other swag bag type of things like base items and content from the actual movie, like real posters that you could get for the game. And if you could, if, and a lot of times it was only in the game for like a month and then it was taken out. Now, it was actually a pretty interesting part of the game because once you got the emblem, you know, you could actually have the Superman emblem for your character or Superman character. But some people actually didn't get it, missed out on everything, and they, had, they, they, they could not obtain it after it was taken out of the game. So it just caused kind of a stir, and people didn't know how to use it, what they wanted for their character. And of course, the, the good news is, after all, after, after all those years, all these past couple of years, and this year, 2018, because of the death of Superman, they actually came up with a new one called the 80th Anniversary Superman Emblem, which people can use now for a limited time until December. Now, if you just so you know, that's available until December for that particular event. But it never was available before. There were certain things took in and out of the game. There was even, believe it or not, in Legends PvP, there was a Supergirl character that they actually had based on a TV series that had just come out the year prior to that or the few months before that that they put in the game. And believe it or not, there was some kind of an issue with this character. And um, for some reason, I guess they may not have gotten permission from Daybreak or whatever they did, and the Supergirl character was removed from the game. So the only way you were able to play Legends PvP Supergirl is if you already purchased her. Otherwise, once she got taken out of the game, you could no longer get her anymore. Um, now there are there have been a lot of updates since then. Some of the characters' changes and looks, like Aquaman's changes, changes his look. Superman's look is no longer the classic look anymore. Whereas most of the PvP Legends characters you can play as they are. Most of the NPCs are the actual main characters in the game that you will talk to in the game, like Superman. Batman's looks have changed over time, and uh, including Lois Lane and a few other characters in the game. Even Doomsday for for Christ's sake, changes character too. So those are some of the changes you might have noticed. And then one of the other changes that you may have known about DC Universe Online was as far as the powers go, there was a power tree that you could use. So you were only able allowed 15 powers per person in the game through, through each power. Of course, there's not more variety of powers, where at one time you could only have sorcery, nature, ice, fire, not even earth. 
and a few other ones like gadgets and then they had to keep making power for the game but the tree was very was very beneficial to some people where you could go in and pick your, your power as you went along and gain levels in the game but for some reason it caused a problem in the end because some people wanted to have more than just 15 powers to use and yeah, they didn't feel it was enough especially having a load out of six powers at one time so what they went ahead and did what the revamp did was take out the took out the trees and now you can basically gain levels and have as, all the powers by the time you reach level 30 that you want and choose between instead of having the barriers just 15 powers and also they also took out they, they also added a, a new power called focus which is a hybrid power which i can show you real quick so instead of having the trees now what they have is they have ability loadout see so as you can see all the powers are available now for everything if you go into the stats there are three new focus powered kind of stat points available for the game there's focus weapon expert there's focus hybrid there's focus suit power which focus on certain stats for your character as well as the different abilities listed in here which you can unlock throughout the game you can also get um, your iconic powers too all in one tree so basically the tree was just a just a temporary thing i guess but it was actually in the game for quite a while for several years before they actually took it out but it was it was very useful for some people but for other people they figured it was just not really beneficial to the game because you could only have 15 as opposed to now all powers unlocked once you reach level 30. so those are just some of the things i mentioned quite a bit in the game that you may or may not know about dc universe online and uh some of them are, some of them are still around some of them are not around anymore but like I said, just like everything else, there are things that are, that are gone but not forgotten. And I certainly haven't forgot them. And I remember them. But like I said, everything, the time moves on, you have to change it with the time, I guess. Anyhow, those are just those are some things I wanted to mention. If you like this video, if there's some things you think you remember about the game that were in it that I didn't mention, please let me know. Uh, comment and like to subscribe. But thank you for watching and look for some more videos in the future about this. And thank you. Have a good day, everybody. This is Bar Tips, and see you guys next time. Keep playing. Bye-bye now.